What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. Today I'm actually making a video in response to the top comment on our uploaded Skyrim build, the Yakudin. This awesome build came out a few weeks ago and it's a red guard and if you've watched the video you'll know that we picked the race almost entirely for role playing and not really for statistical reasons. You see that's the thing about Skyrim, you should almost always pick your race based on role playing purposes or simply what you think would be cool because in the end statistics won't play a massive role anyway. Anyone can do almost anything and any race can become extremely overpowered at any playstyle if they choose to. I can't stress that enough, so please remember that I definitely know this and definitely believe it. But anyways, the top comment on the Yakudin build said, let's be real here, who actually plays as a red guard? All of the other races are better, lol. Seeing this, I wasn't enraged or anything like that, I just thought it would probably be a good idea to make a video about why this most certainly is not the case. I see this idea that red guards are the worst race from a statistical perspective floating around on the internet almost as often as I see the joke about why any given build has a high one-handed skill. For your information, yes, the second top comment on the Yakudin build was, his one-handed is super high because he is lonely. Moving on, this video will be putting roleplaying aside and just focusing on the actual use of each race in Skyrim, looking at which one is the most effective to play as. Now, to begin with, what I'm going to do is outline what a red guard gets as a racial bonus and then tell you which races are definitely better to play if you care solely about statistics. Then we can work backwards and look at the contenders for the lowest position and realize why red guards don't take that position. So red guards get a 50% resistance to poison, which is one of the less useful resistances in the game and the adrenaline rush ability which lets you regenerate stamina 10 times faster for 60 seconds once per day. They start with two basic spells, flames and healing and they get a plus 10 bonus to the one handed skill and a plus 5 bonus to alteration, archery, block, destruction and smithing. This is a good time for me to explain that the skill bonuses and the starting spells don't really matter at all. You can rapidly attain any of the starting spells and quickly gain access to most of the spells in the entire game. In terms of starting skills these quickly become useless as you level up as much as you desire. The starting skill bonuses are neat at level 1 because they give you an advantage straight out of the gate, the Helgen gate that is, but because you can level up anything it becomes obsolete even during later early-ish game stages. I think most people acknowledge this and most of my focus in this video will be on the racial powers and inbuilt bonuses as a result. Also even if starting bonuses did matter, each race gets plus 10 to 1 skill and plus 5 to 5 skills so it all works works out quite evenly anyways. Yes, some builds will be better archers at level 1, like Wood Elves, or in the case of Red Guards, they are the best one-handed warriors at level 1. Again, this stuff isn't super important, but just know that you can make a powerful build using the starting skills of any race. I also want to admit that because of lore reasons, I too was a little annoyed when I noticed Red Guards get starting bonuses to magic skills like Alteration and Destruction, but with all that said, let's get into the other races of Skyrim that are easy to look at and say, these races are definitely definitely better from a statistical perspective, so let's not bother comparing them to a red guard. So the two best races in Skyrim are Orcs and Bretons. Orcs, due to their Berserker Rage power, which lets them take half damage and do double damage for 60 seconds once per day, and Bretons, due to their inbuilt 25% magic resistance and their Dragon Skin ability, which gives them 50% spell absorption for 60 seconds once per day. Now in this video, I'll go ahead and say that yes, anyone can achieve plenty of powerful advantages, equivalent and beyond those given to you by racial bonuses by using enchanting. So before a genius in the audience comments, well, why are Bretons even that good? You can just enchant magical resistance on your armor pieces. I just want to state that while this is true, the reason why the racial magic resistance is still amazing is because enchanting slots are a finite resource. So yes, while you could just enchant your way to 25% magical resistance, playing as a Breton would allow you to save that enchantment slot for something else, like Fortify One-Handed or Fortify Illusion, or both if you have the extra effect perk. I don't think the Berserker Rage Power really needs Needs to be justified. It's just so incredibly powerful. We then have High Elves who get plus 50 to Magicka to start with and have the Highborn power, which lets them regenerate Magicka extremely rapidly for 60 seconds once a day. This basically lets you cast spells non-stop, which anyone can conclude is very powerful. The bonus plus 50 Magicka is also pretty decent. It's not heaps, but it's quite useful. And yes, while you can enchant yourself some more Magicka, doing that would take up a valuable slot. In the same sense, 
Simply allocating five level ups to Magicka will also get you there. But again, there's an opportunity cost in regards to health or stamina. You are also five levels better off in terms of stats when you play as a high elf, so it seems like the snobby ones are right. They are technically more powerful than men. We then have races like Nords, Dark Elves, and Argonians. Nords have an inbuilt 50% resistance to Frost, which in the land of Skyrim is very helpful. They also have the Battle Cry ability, which can be used once a day to make targets flee for 30 seconds. This one isn't that useful for the whole game, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Dark Elves have the Ancestor's Wrath ability, which allows them to basically use a Fire Cloak once a day for 60 seconds, that does 8 points of damage per second to opponents that get too close. This definitely isn't that useful, but the main reason why Dunmar are considered good is due to their inbuilt 50% resistance to fire. A niche use of this is actually countering the negative of playing as a vampire. And then those sneaky lizards I mentioned, the Argonians. They come in with a 50% resistance to disease, the ability to breathe underwater, and the hissed skin power, which lets them regenerate health 10 times faster once a day for 60 seconds. Hissed skin makes your health regenerate so fast that you're almost invincible while using it, and water breathing and resist disease are pretty much useless. You can cure any disease with a potion or by using a shrine, and you can breathe underwater with a potion too. Not that you ever have that many opportunities where you desperately need to do this. They're nice convenience bonuses though, but again, hissed skin is where the Argonian shines. That leaves Wood Elves, Khajiits, and Imperials. Are these three races better than Red Guards? Let's find out. And after I talk about them all, I will go through a certain problem Red Guards do have. But firstly, we will compare a Wood Elf to a Red Guard. Both have the same starting spells and equally useful skill bonuses, of course. Starting with plus 10 Archery is also arguably made less useful by the fact that the Archery Teacher Feindle can be acquired as a companion straight away in Riverwood. Whatever your opinion on this is, it doesn't really matter. Let's just take a look at the racial abilities. So Red Guards and Bosma both have a 50% resistance to poison. This can help against things like spiders, Chorus, and Falma, but overall it isn't the best thing since sliced bread. Obviously, the two races are equal in this respect. It then becomes a battle of what is better, Adrenaline Rush or Command Animal in combination with 50% disease resistance. Well, as I mentioned earlier, disease resistance is basically useless considering how ridiculously easy it is to cure a disease. If you then compare Adrenaline Rush to Command Animal, Animal, you will find the Red Guard to be the clear winner. Command Animal becomes useless the second you acquire the Animal Allegiance Shout. It's not too hard to acquire this Shout, and once you do get it, you can call on the help of an animal about every minute, instead of once every day. Furthermore, the ability to call on an animal to fight isn't even particularly useful anyway, because it's far more efficient to just fight enemies yourself. With Adrenaline Rush, you will regenerate stamina so fast that you can power attack non-stop, allowing you to dish out insane damage per second, especially if you're using dual wielding power attacks. But what if, say, you want the animal as a damage sponge? Well, in that case, I alert you again to Feindl, or any other companion that you can acquire early. Lydia would be a perfect example of a useful damage sponge that you can get early on. So really then, when do you ever really need an animal to fight for you? Or rather, I should ask, when would getting an animal to fight for you be better than having unlimited power attacks? The answer is at level 1, when you're about to get killed by a mammoth and instead use it to help you. That's about it. There's basically no in-game advantage to being a Bosma compared to races with elemental resistances, or in the case of Red Guards, once a day powers that are actually combat viable. Therefore, I believe Wood Elves to be a weaker race, statistically speaking, of course. Now let's move on to Khajiit, the race that I chose for my first ever Skyrim playthrough, the coolest cats in Tamriel. While Khajiit are cool, their special abilities aren't too crash hot. They have a night eye ability, allowing them to see in the dark for 60 seconds for an unlimited amount of times each day, and they have their claws, making unarmed attacks do 15 points of damage. So let's talk about night eye. Besides being able to get night eye as a vampire, it's definitely not super useful. It's most certainly a convenience power and won't help that much. Much in combat. Now I know you're probably thinking, yeah well Night Eye would be good for shooting arrows at enemies in really dark places or searching for loot in dark corners of ruins. You wouldn't exactly be wrong thinking this, but the reason why it's not that useful is because these situations hardly exist. Skyrim is not a very dark game, and even in areas that are supposed to be dark, you can usually still see. Night Eye is basically never needed, and when it does have the opportunity to be useful, it's only a handful of times in your playthrough, really. Fun Funnily enough, I would even prefer 
prefer the Red Guard's 50% poison resistance over Night Eye, simply because there are more instances throughout the game where I would benefit from it. Adrenaline Rush is definitely more useful too. The main notable thing about the Khajiits, however, is the 15 points of claw damage. This is incredibly high base damage, equivalent to a Dragonbone Sword. This is great if you want to stay at level 1 forever or if you're making an unarmed build, but it's definitely not going to compare to a build who has chosen a sword or any other weapon instead, then smithed up said weapon perhaps enchanted it too. Unarmed in Skyrim, even for a Khajiit, isn't that viable as you start to level up more and more, unless of course you use exploits or you base the entire build around using little niche things to create higher unarmed damage and then use enchantments to increase the damage even further. Obviously, this can can make an unarmed build powerful, and we've made great unarmed builds before, but they could never be as strong as a maxed out warrior, assassin, or mage. Such high unarmed damage is definitely cool though, but there you have it. Generally speaking, I'd rank a red guard as a more powerful race than a Khajiit, unless of course they have to fight unarmed. Definitely pick a Khajiit if you're going for an unarmed build. And finally, we have the Imperial. Imperials have no inbuilt resistances, but they have one power and one active effect. The active effect is called Imperial Luck, and what this does is cause you to find between 2 and 10 more gold in places you would normally find gold. This means that on corpses, usually having gold, and in containers like chests, you'll gather a bit more wealth. My main problem with this, and why I think it's decent but not too amazing, is that it's really easy to get rich in Skyrim. So say you're a character in Skyrim who wants to make lots of money. By picking an Imperial, you will make this money faster. However, the problem is that because you're already doing things like investing into speech and probably stealing because that's a great way to make wealth, you're going to get rich quick anyway. Let's say you open a massive number of chests. A thousand chests. For sake of example, let's say you are the luckiest person alive and you find the massive 10 more coins each and every time out of the thousand times. This would put you 10,000 gold ahead of everyone else who wasn't an Imperial and at that the luckiest Imperial. 10,000 gold sounds nice, but by the time you've opened 1,000 containers and accumulated it, you should be so rich that 10,000 gold doesn't mean too much or you've already bought all the stuff that you wanted to. Besides, there's not actually that much in Skyrim you need to buy once you have your setup down pat. And like I said, you'll easily afford this as any character who specializes in speech and in getting rich, regardless of if you're an Imperial. Really this makes the active effect a convenience, but at that, a convenience you don't really need. If you really just want to have 999,999 gold at all times, go right ahead. But outside of that, it's just not better than Adrenaline Rush. Here's where I get divided though. Is the voice of the Emperor better than Adrenaline Rush? To cut to the chase, I'm not really willing to decide that Red Guards are most certainly better than Imperials, but by comparing them to these races, I can show you that they're definitely not the worst, and I'll tell you why Voice of the Emperor is probably underrated. While it can be only used once a day, same as Adrenaline Rush, it pacifies every NPC, including vampires, within a 75 foot radius, and it affects enemies up to level 99. This makes it better than a pacify spell, although arguably a pacify based character could just use their spells, and these spells would affect creatures too. Obviously though, if you're a warrior and you get into a sticky situation, or you're an assassin who doesn't use illusion, then this can calm everyone down, giving you the ability to escape alive or just start killing everyone. Pacification is not to be underestimated, but obviously neither is unlimited power attacks. The other thing to note is that while you could just replace this power with pacify spells, you can replace tons of these racial abilities through different methods. As I mentioned, the Animal Allegiance shout makes the Bosmas command animal ability useless. But now I'll tell you the slight problem with Adrenaline Rush, although it still doesn't change my position on the fact that statistically, Red Guards are definitely not the worst race, as I explained in this video. That title would probably have to go to Wood Elves or Khajiit, or if you found something I missed, to the Imperials. None of these are as competent in combat as a Red Guard. So the problem with Adrenaline Rush though is that while it can be used to have unlimited power attacks once per day for 60 seconds, making you an absolute machine in combat, there is another item which lets you do that. An item which I can never be bothered to make however, and that is Vegetable Soup. Vegetable Soup was added in the Hearthfire DLC, and what it does is make health and stamina regenerate for 1 point per second for 720 seconds. For health, this isn't the most amazing thing, but for stamina, if you realize that you only need 1 point of stamina to power 
power attack, then you'll realize that this also lets you power attack non-stop, for much longer too. Again, as I said, there's a way to make many of these racial powers obsolete, but the problem here is that you need to craft vegetable soup, which makes it a bit of a hassle. If you're bothered to get your fearless warrior character and roam around Skyrim to pick up all the potatoes, leeks, tomatoes, and cabbages you can find, then go ahead. These are the ingredients required for every single vegetable soup you want to make. If you find it doesn't break role-playing your tough warrior, and if you're bothered to go get the ingredients and make the soup, you can actually achieve adrenaline rush capabilities with any race. That, my friends, is the way around the Red Guard's main advantage. People also say that as you level up and get enough stamina, you don't need adrenaline rush anymore. But to these people, I say two words, opportunity cost. Instead of spending so many points in stamina to make it seem almost unlimited, you could have had a decent amount of stamina, so you don't usually run out, and then allocated way more points into health or magicka if you wanted that. Then when those special times come where you really actually need a blitz of never-ending power attacks and super high damage per second, turn on that adrenaline rush and get slicing. But anyways, as you can see, in terms of actual raw racial effectiveness, Red Guards are definitely not the weakest race in Skyrim. And the other three races in the bottom four either have powers and bonuses that can become obsolete, or whenever really that you in the first place. Thank you guys so much for watching the video all the way through. And if you did enjoy it, please do like the video and share it with your Skyrim loving friends. Our Patreon link can be found in the description as well as the link to our social media pages. My name is Michael. I hope you learned something new and I look forward to nerding out with you all again very soon.